All right, thank you everyone. Um, continuing on Greg's theme of uh, scale and success, um, I'm going to be talking to you about a greener future. Um, that's for us as a business at Infigo, but also potentially for you guys as our customers. Um, and we're doing that through sustainability and the innovation of our product and our business. Can you all hear me at the back? Yeah. A bit louder? Yeah. <clears throat> so me, anybody that doesn't know me, I'm Alex, uh, Tech Ops Director at Infigo. Been here at the same time as Greg. I think we started a couple of weeks apart. Um, started off uh, in past life as a developer. Quickly realized there are far more intelligent people than me at that. So uh, moved on to... Uh, <laughs> um, came to Infigo as the uh, development and release manager. Um, came and helped implement processes to better structure our deployments and our development processes a long, long time ago. Probably about six of us in the room at the time. Um, and now a uh, tech ops director um, doing things that I'm really passionate about, which is um, empowering people, setting up processes, introducing systems to um, help people work more efficiently um, as, the biz as a business and also for our customers um, and improving the product and driving the product forward. Um, <clears throat> yeah, very proud of what we do at Infigo personally and as a collective. I think if you ask everyone at the business um, and that shows, it shows in the work that we do, it shows in the brand that we um, create, it shows in the product that we build and it shows hopefully in the way that we uh, apply ourselves with our customers uh, and out in the wild. Um, but yeah, everyone's passionate, everyone's focused on the same thing, which is providing our customers with the best product uh, and support. So before I get on to, so I'm gonna break this down into like three parts. The first part is a bit about some changes we've made over the last 12 to 18 months at Infigo um, to create the foundations for Scale and, scale and success in Infigo, but also for our customers. Um, and then on to a bit about um, the development side, um, features that we've released in the last six to 12 months, features that we plan to release in the next, next 12 months, and then a little bit at the end about our plan for sustainability um, and um, carbon neutrality, which we're gonna to touch on. So this is a big thing that we've, we've introduced in Infigo and we've seen huge success um, both in um, the numbers but also in the well-being of our staff and the product and the brand and it's been a real cultural shift that we've introduced at Infigo. Um, we've um, gone back to the basics, we've, gone, we've focused on productivity, um, there's a point in there about output over effort, you know we're, we're pushing aside the archaic uh, mentality of I'm sending emails at weekends I'm sending emails in the evening because I want to make it appear as if I'm working hard. That's not what we want in Figo. We want you working smart. If you're sending emails and doing work at weekends and in the evenings, there's, a, there's an issue there with your time management and your prioritization. So a big exercise, we've done a big exercise across the entire business about understanding what each person in the business does, where they add value, and removing the tasks that are all, uh, mundane, um, repetitive, can be um, delegated, can be stopped, um, and there's been a big push around that in the business. Um, and as a, as a result of that, um, we've seen a real um, empowerment of individuals. We've got this challenge culture now. It's not about Douglas standing at the front saying, this is what we're gonna do and this is how we're gonna do it. It's everyone in the business contributing that. It's coming from beneath, it's coming from the sides and it's coming from above. And it's empowering everyone in the business to um, feel like they can make a difference. As a result of that, we got voted the one of the best places to work um, in the UK for well-being, <laughs> which uh, Precision Cards have also been uh, awarded as well. Uh, for well-being, uh, best places to work tech company in the UK and also got our great place to work certification. Um, and there's actually another award that we're going to be issued this year as well on top of that. There's also been a real focus on customer and it's reuniting the entire business. Greg has for years and years have harped on about customers, everything. We've got, yeah, yeah, Greg, yeah, well, all right, you know, shut up. But it's, it's, it's so important. Um, and, and now everyone in the business understands that and it's a real focus and it's a shift in how we work. So by, has anybody uh, here ever been at a business where they've not felt like they can make a difference, where they felt like they're just a number? Be careful. <laughs> To, yeah, and how does that how did that make you feel? Well, when you felt like you couldn't, where you felt like you're a number and 
Yeah. So. Rob. Yeah. Carl. Yeah. Yeah. So we identified that as 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 a trigger for those sorts of things. So by empowering your employees, you don't have to pay them more. You don't have to treat them more. You don't have to. We you, you obviously you want to. You want to reward them in your success. But actually, it's changing their psychology and making them want to be proactive, making them want to make a difference. And so that's what we've been spending a lot of time doing at Infigo, and it's really made a difference. On to updates. So a couple of updates that we've released in the last six to 12 months of note. Um, which much of this has been announced in the last kind of discussions this morning as well. CMS Plus, Greg touched on it, the ability to create a storefront quickly, branded. Um, Mel said he did it. Um, we talked about um, a customer of ours that did it. Um, insights, reporting, so custom yeah. reports that are, excuse me. <laughs> um, custom reports that gives you the power, our customers the power to drill down and, and produce the reports that you want. So the CMS Plus, it's about empowering the customer to build branded storefronts without the need of Infigo. Insights, it's the, empowering the customer with the ability to create their own custom reports without the need of Infigo going into the database and pulling it out. Invent, it's a tool to build your mega edit products. It's our InDesign plugin. Again, a tool to empower our customers to use our software better. And then we've got our print IQ integration, which we discussed and demonstrated this morning. And it's a, it's a completely feature rich integration. Um, probably the, the best one that, and you can speak to it, print IQ that, that they've got in, um, in their uh, armory. And it does a lot of powerful things. I mentioned it this morning, product sync. So you've got one point of entry in, in print IQ and all your products are synced to Infigo. Uh, live inventory, live pricing and estimates, pushing orders in, status is back. And then for the more technical guys, webhook. So you can now trigger events from Infigo that send data out of Infigo to third party systems that you can configure and, and compose yourselves. Are there anybody in the room using these features over the last six to 12 months? Have you used these yet? Carl, which ones are you? Yeah. And have you seen a real difference in your ability to use the software and And prior to that, how long would that have taken you? Or would you have been able to do it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, that's good to hear. And hopefully that's a story amongst more of our customers. Uh, something that you're probably keen to look at. I'm not sure why the ticks have gone funny, but our product roadmap. So the next six to 12 months, these are some of the things that we have identified as a business that we want to work on. Our invents, our InDesign plugin is going to continue to um, develop. We've got releases out um, in the coming months for support for spreads, layouts, batch, barcodes, um, and that's gonna carry on growing. Grouping, Connect CIRM, so uh, it's our label solution. So we are partnering with CIRM to uh, um, um, target the label sector. And again, it's another really tight integration with them, um, creating estimates, creating products, pushing orders in, status is back, creating products, creating customers. Um, and it's something that we're really excited about from a slightly different direction. Parametric 3D modeling. Um, again, a little bit more in the labels and packaging space, but it'll allow you to create 3D, 3D models and um, dynamic die lines based on parameters that you feed into MegaRedit. So you can create custom shapes easily. You can create 3D boxes with levers and flaps, and you can see it in, in um, Mega Edit as a 3D preview, built dynamically and animated so that you can display it to your customers. Uh, dress book management, maybe more for the B2B world, where you've got customers that potentially have a, a long list of addresses that they need to manage. You'll be able to now create address books, assign customers and access permissions to those address books, and then offer them in a smarter address lookup in the checkout. Shopify plugin, so again, customers that have already got potentially a Shopify website they don't want to rebuild in Infigo, they can now use our plugin to embed our editor uh, in their existing site. Um, insights reports in my account, um, so those that you have built your custom reports at the moment, they're only available in admin to your administrators and now you'll be able to create custom reports, or well, not now, but you will be able to, um, and make them available within my account to your customers to download and export themselves. Oops. 
couple more. Um, Roger mentioned this yesterday or the day before. Um, using Mega Edit or Invite to create your invent to create your invoices, job tickets, and packaging slips. So moving away from our Invigo designer, grandfathering that, and then really pushing that forwards into Mega Edit. Um, Variable upselling kitting, this is a this is a quite a cool one. So in Mega Edit at the moment, um, you, you personalize one product and that's it. What we're what we're introducing is the ability to create variables in Mega Edit that can be shared across products. So you can, if you think of it from a kit perspective or an upselling perspective, you can personalize a product in Mega Edit, go through to the basket, get a pop-up, and have that pop-up already personalized with the information you've entered into Mega Edit for your previous product. So if you've personalized a lanyard and you want to offer a hat, when you go into the basket, it'll say, what about ordering a hat? And that hat has already got your image and your name that you've entered into your lanyard. And then you can just add that straight to basket and check out without having to open up the editor and do more personalization. Similarly with like kitting, you can, you can order a kit of variable products, personalize just the one and have them all um, personalized in one go. And this can go really far. Like you can potentially in the future create a category where all of the thumbnails are personalized to that product, to that customer based on previous data they've entered. Um, In-app notifications. This is um, less of a product improvement, more of a way for us to communicate with our customers better. So we're still challenging ways of communicating with you guys. The traditional email <laughs> is probably still not the right way to do it. A lot of you don't receive it, a lot of you don't open it, a lot of you don't read it, you're getting a lot, everyone's getting tons and tons of emails. And so um, we're attempting to communicate you with, with you guys directly in app. So we can send you messages about updates that are coming, releases that have just gone out, promotions, uh, events like today that you might not know about, seminars that are coming up, um, Greg's uh, Academy monthly, um, meetings that he's setting up for customers, they can all be advertised in, in, in admin itself so that you guys can see it and understand it and we can push those messages to you on demand. And just try and, try and encourage that communication with you guys to be a bit more proactive and responsive. The Infigo LMS, um, Greg touched on it. So the Infigo Academy is something that Greg and uh, Sam have, have built up over the last 12 months. And the LMS is a step on from that. So it's, it's taking those YouTube videos and those um, academy videos that Sam has created and putting them into a learning management system where you can follow these learning tracks and you can complete them. And then at the end, you can get a certificate and whatever. And we can track your progress through that. And so if it's something specific you want to look at or learn, we can send you to the LMS. There'll be a series of videos that you can work your way through on and you can complete those and then you become a certified Infigo Mega Edit expert and so on. And then there'll be more of those introduced and different learning tracks that, again, Sam as part of the Academy Management will manage. And it's all about that self-serve, um, providing you the tools in order to, to improve your uh, usage of the Infigo platform. And finally, development workshops. Again, in the, in the push to communicate with our customers and hear from you guys a bit more, we're introducing next month, the end of next month, a workshop where our developers are going to be in it. It's not going to be me, Greg, Doug, the same people that get up and talk and communicate with you guys. It's the guys that are doing the work. So there'll be an opportunity for anybody that wants to join to speak directly to Michael Zorn, our CTO, Pablo, our development manager, um, Dorin and Roman, our senior developers. And it's, it's a time for you guys. So I've got a, um, I love a QR code. I've got a QR code on here, which will just take you to a form. You can do it now, but we'll also send it out after. But you can scan this and there's a little form to say whether you're interested in something like that and also a box at the bottom about the topics that you potentially like to dis have discussed in that and it's completely set it's sessions that are completely up to you you can there's nothing that's off the table um, and you'll you'll have technical resource there to um, to talk to and, and, and get ideas and, and answers from but definitely as a business, we're trying to get our developers and everyone in the business to talk to our customers more um, so that they can be informed. And it's a lot easier conversation when you're trying to get them to do work for our customers, when they understand the issue and, and they hear it firsthand and when it comes through support or it comes through Greg or someone else. 
So on to the green part of this presentation then. So we've um, created a brand, uh, Chris has, because he loves creating logos and brands. He's very good at it. Um, but in a it's a serious point. It's something that I'm passionate about. It's something that we're passionate about as a business. Um, and, um, and what does it mean? So Infigo Eco is a, is a sustainability program that we are launching. Um, myself and Gregory are the green team. <laughs> Um, but it means, it, means, it means introducing a sustainability policy in the business. Um, it means understanding um, uh, our impact on the environment, on the community, on, on, our, on our staff. Um, it means um, in the long term, or not so long term, going carbon neutral for us as a business. Um, it means uh, uh, reducing the carbon emissions that we produce and offsetting the ones that we can't. Um, and it means providing a um, addition to our solution that can allow for the print production, uh, um, print production uh, run to also be carbon neutral. So I'll touch on that in a minute. Um, we've also got a third piece of that, which is a tree planting initiative, which is almost live. Yeah, so uh, it's really just from us, every time you guys push a storefront live, we make a donation to, and we partnered up with a company called More Trees. We make a donation to More Trees to plant a tree every time you put a storefront live. So don't go putting too many storefronts live. <laughs> no, no, no. But there, so that's what we're doing as an initiative internally. So yeah, as a business, we recognize that as a business, you know, we are actions and our activities have an impact. And uh, as I mentioned before, we're all passionate about, about making a difference and a positive difference. So this is split up into um, Three bits, but two really. One is to become carbon neutral, and one is to provide this carbon neutral printing solution. So we, with this, with this strategy, um, we've got uh, commitments that we're willing to stick to. And we're going to keep. Uh, um, one is about the planet, so obviously limiting our um, our effects on global climate change, ecosystem biodiversity. So we're we're committed to working towards being carbon neutral, and being sustainable as a business. People. Again, human rights, equality, all of these basic things that everyone should be, but in, uh, in writing and that we're gonna actually commit to treating our customers and our employees fairly. And then in the community, we've got, we're committed to being good people. We're committed to helping our community. We're committed to doing things for charity, volunteering. So as a business, we're, <coughs> we're giving everyone a day, at least a day a year where we're asking them to go out and, and volunteer their time with charities or um, projects that they're close to um, and just giving their time um, back to the community. So carbon neutral, so we're going to carry out a carbon footprint assessment as a business. Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to reduce what we can and we're going to offset the rest. We're lucky um, with the business that we are, being a tech business, we have very little carbon emissions. Um, we have our, our um, web server farm, which is already carbon neutral. So all of the power that generates our, our, our server farm is already 100% renewable energy. Um, we have our offices, which again, minimal, but again, we, we can uh, change our electricity providers. We could be more effective with the, um, the appliances that we use and so on. And then we have our business travel, and that's the big piece that, um, that we need to focus on. So Douglas and I already have been to Belgium this year, and we drove there instead of flying in a Tesla. <laughs> um, but equally, it's just one of those things that we're going to make sure as a business we consider when we book these events and these travels in the future. And then we're going to obtain a uh, PS 2060 certification, which is a carbon neutrality standard. So we have to go through a series of steps. We have to be officiated. We have to sh demonstrate um, our carbon emissions and demonstrate us um, offsetting or reducing those. So that's the plan. The second part is offering a technical solution to our customers to offer carbon neutral printing. Um, so what is this? This is a new module that we're building, we're integrating, um, that will provide uh, reliable and certified information for the level of CO2 emissions that that job will produce when producing and distributing that to the customer. So what, what, what you'll get or what your customers will get with this module is on the product landing page when you're requesting a price and they're entering all of their job specifications, they'll see a CO2 emissions that that job will produce as part of that, as part of producing and dispatching that um, item. 
and then they then they can and how we implement this hasn't been discussed in, entirely but we can give them the option to pay the offset additions for that not everybody wants that not everyone believes in that because where that offset money goes you know is up for question there's been a lot of debate around that but you have the option to then charge more where you can offset that carbon and it goes to the offset carbon charities that do that but the big pit is that you can understand and customers can understand the co2 emissions that are producing that job so that if you've got customers that are that have um, sustainability policies where they, they where they need to understand what their scope three carbon emissions are you can provide that as part of your solution to them and how we're doing that is we're going to integrate with a company called the BVDM so it's a it's a company that will allow you to enter in similar to like an IM, MOS does all of your print processes all of your uh, substrate stock uh, manufacturing processes everything like that into a database and then we query that API and it returns back based on what we send it a carbon emissions total and a potential additional cost for the job. What that means then for you guys potentially is that you're using a system from a carbon neutral business in Figo and you're using a carbon offsetting module in the production process. So effectively you can almost offer a complete carbon neutral printing solution to your customers when they order that print. There's a, there's a level more that you can take in terms of you becoming carbon neutral and your sustainability policies that may then come into question. But from our perspective and the service that we're offering from the company and the software and the production that you guys are doing, you can advertise that as being carbon neutral. And then lastly, yeah, there's tree plant initiatives, which I mentioned before. Um, every uh, storefront that you push live, we plant a tree. But equally, uh, Chris and the guys now are taking this uh, QR code, because we love a QR code, on the road <laughs> uh, to every exhibition that we do and every lead that we get. We scan that and we also plant a tree. Um, age event. So any questions on all of the stuff that I've just mentioned there from uh, cultural shift, things that we've released, things that we're going to release and obviously our push into the world of green. Yes, Carl? Yes. So it will be embedding our editor into a Shopify site. But obviously it takes out all the technical API connectivity that you're going to have to do and it's in an app that we provide. So you'd buy the plugin, you'd install it and it would automatically allow you to convert what would be stock items in Shopify into Infigo mega edit variable items. Um, so you'd still build your products in Invent and still build it on your storefront but then your Shopify would embed that via an iframe. Um, yeah, so I don't want to say you can have all of the functionality you can have on a catfish on in Vigo storefront. <laughs> um, <clears throat> just got electrocuted. Um, but yeah, if you, if you can do dynamic canvases in Mega Edit on in Vigo, you can do dynamic canvases in um, Shopify. <laughs> any other questions? Is any of that of interest to anyone? Any of the, does anybody get excited about what we're doing over the next twelve months and and our green initiatives? Even Douglas. Oh, wow, tin. <laughs> yes. Uh, can you say yeah. Um, have you seen the uh, let's talk about that after. <laughs> let's talk about that after. BVDM, yes. Yep. So do you, do you do something like this already? No? Okay. Um, <laughs> that's, Doug, that's Doug the salesman. Um, oh, I see, yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, oh. Yeah, sure. No, no, no. So we, we, we've done a lot of uh, investigations as to which partners to go with. I've had calls with lots of people. There's lots of people offering this as a service out there and lots of them offer it in different ways, different cost points and for different reasons. And we've identified the BVDM as the best fit for us, um, aligned business-wise, but also from an integration perspective. But you also see like, if you go and speak to Print IQ, they're doing the same. 
So when you when you create an estimate in, in Print IQ, they'll have the ability to pr pr yeah, yeah, to provide you with your carbon uh, emissions. And again, there's a decision as a business whether you offer the, offer the offset or whether you just provide them with um, how much emissions are being generated from that job or not. And you get you get you get an ID, so then you can track that back to the project yeah. where those where though if you're going to offset it, that project where that offset money is contributed to and the effects that it's had and, and so. You're so. End, Anything else? Uh, CMS Plus is one that we've just done, yeah. But we are still developing that. Um, some of the bits is kind of tidying it up a bit. Um, one of them is, so when you're in the front end, you can go into edit mode and you can link, click, click, click a link directly from your content template in the front end to the editable content in the admin. Because there's still this, disjoint between, right, I've got this slider on here and I want to amend it. When I know where it is, I can amend it easily because it's using content templates, but how do I find what editable content it's using? So you'll be able to go into edit mode, click on that, go straight to admin, straight to the editable content that um, it's you, you need to edit it and you can edit it live there. <clears throat> so I touched on them a bit briefly, uh, support for spreads, support for grouping, support for layouts, support for batch, support for um, spot colors, which is actually coming in the next week, uh, support, support for barcodes, um, increased logic. <clears throat> um, so um, yeah, some additional logic into our existing logic engine. Um, and then support for creating job tickets, mega uh, packaging slips and invoices in, in it as well. <clears throat> Wonderful, thank you.